might this not be a good time to dust off those clever things like every cloud has a silver lining? So um, out of the ashes of Corona, Africa must rise. So it's envisioning a new Nigeria through Africa. So interestingly, every time I open my WhatsApp during lockdown, I would be diverted to a newspaper article. I downloaded a couple of weeks earlier in which President Trump in February this year had listed Nigeria as one of the countries whose citizens would be barred from applying for immigrant visas to the United States in the future, citing security concerns. I remember there was quite a hula baloo about it at the time, and many were upset, almost like it was the end of the world. I also recall that last year, about this time, the UAE denying young Nigerian visas a sanction imposed on all Nigerians because of the criminal behavior of a few. All the time, African countries were referred to as shitful countries by President Trump. You know, our reference to the foreign and our dependence on the munificence of external countries caused us to remain dumbstruck even when our sovereignty and our dignity was challenged. But here we are today. Like all other African countries, we shut our airports on the 21st of March, 2020. We haven't gone anywhere. Nobody has come into Nigeria, and the country is still standing. So what does that tell us? What does it tell us about what is possible, what we are capable of, and about our strength across the African continent? What does it tell us about our capacity to be independent? What does it tell us about our capacity to be able to stand on our own? What does this tell us about what we really need and what we have? What does it tell us about the unnecessary imports of huge amounts of consumables from China and the rest of the world, which includes toothpicks, by the way, that we haven't been able to do for a while, but at this time we're only able to import necessary emergency supplies and we're still standing. We have become a country that produced nothing. We are so import dependent and external travel reliant that many probably thought we couldn't survive the closure of our borders. We need to start to review our priorities. We are a nation on a continent that is blessed with natural resources. We are blessed with rich soil for agriculture, a rich culture, a rich history, and a young population. If Africa could get its act together, we probably would produce most of the foods that we consume. And after feeding ourselves, we could even feed the rest of the world. Take our doctors performing health miracles everywhere in the world except here. Take our crude bonny life treasured everywhere else except here. Every time all prices go up, we panic. Our external dependence leaves us afraid and is in a state of despair. Because we produce little, we sell our oil just so that we can squander the revenue on imports foreign travel and foreign goods and services, including education and health. Have we thought about what we can use our oil for internally? A lot. And please bear with me while I list it. Um, gasoline or petrol, oil oil, liquefied petroleum gas, you know, um, lubricant oil, tar and pitch, shale and heavy oil, gas hydrate. We could completely power ourselves. Then we have byproducts of oil. There are over 6,000 byproducts of oil. So, and the ones that come readily to mind are fertilizer, um, linoleum, perfume, insecticide, petroleum jelly, soap, vitamin capsules, acrylic, nylon, spandex, roofing materials, water pipe, shampoo, antifreeze, combs, food preservative, plastic, wood, rubber, cement, candles, hand lotion, balloons, crayons, ballpoint pens, ink, rubbing alcohol, epoxy, insect repellent, fertilizer, trash bags, aspirin, sunglasses, and even artificial limbs. So why can't we be self-sufficient? The grace of the Almighty is shining on our continent so far, but despite the odds, we're doing a great job managing the COVID-19 pandemic. So let us seize the moment. Out of the ashes of the coronavirus, let Africa rise.
You know, I, I wish we were, I mean, I love this advocacy because, I mean, I, I'm glad we have like a theme this week. Mm. Um, new Nigeria. Yeah, New Nigeria. New it works, Africa. It works in New Africa. It works quite well. But, I, you know, I mean, uh, again, um, I don't want to sound, I'm a very optimistic person. Um, so there's a bit of a dichotomy when I'm going to say, optimistic. yeah, it, it's crazy. And I'm an Arsenal supporter as well. Okay. <laughs> no, Arsenal yeah. supporters are always very optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> they create excuses they why they can't choice. win. <laughs> but, but, but let me say this. Um, I, I speak on th three points I want to touch on. Uh, but before then, just quickly, um, I don't see any sign that we even understand or that we're ready to do the, the, the tough to lifting. To rise out of the To ashes. rise. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't see the sign mm -hmm. presently. Yeah, I, I don't see I it. said before. Um, mm -hmm. It's not evident to me. Maybe I need some more education. I don't see it. Mm -hmm. um, I, and I can, I can tell you why I don't see it. Just looking at what we're doing you now don't with COVID. Know. Everybody knows. Um, and then the other point is this. Um, even as we speak, I, I was talking about we have not been important. Trade has no, been no, going no. on. We so have been things. important. So China, know? China, uh, every we, day. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Go to port. Are coming in. Things have been coming in. I, 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 yeah. I noted it. I noted it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, things have been coming in. Um, and the other point I also need to emphasize, though, is on the contrary, people tend to think that we don't need more trade. We actually need more yes. trade. People tend to say, oh, we're not in. No, no, no. We need more trade. What we, what, we, what, what we need less of is we need more trade internally within Nigeria. We need more trade within Africa. To, to happen because we, we, all our material yes. seems to come from. So rather, I rather we, instead of taking two, two toothpicks from China, let's take it from, from Ghana or from Kenya. Benin Republic mm. or from no, Kenya from Tanzania. or from Tanzania and give them wood or something. Yes. Let's do the more trade internally. And, and the other thing, too, because we also seem, seem to think of agriculture, agriculture. Any country that has millions of people in agriculture, the way we do, is actually not a good thing. We need less people in agriculture but more food. So we yeah. seem to think that, oh, the, the more people in agriculture, the more go and, every graduate go and farm. It's we don't have, sign, we it, don't have, it, it, it's, who, it's who not, don't have infrastructure you know, you look, to process yeah. the agriculture. Okay. So we, we, need, we need to have that, that's why we bring less more people in agriculture, agri but more mechanized agriculture, okay. Um, okay. but more food. Mm. Because the number, the millions of people we have farming now are not even producing enough for us. Yeah. So because we have things of land use, <laughs> You have uh, land use uh, reform that we're not all, doing. Apart from all of um, these uh, wastages, if exactly. you go to go to go to go to go to go to, uh, um, go to my twelve, my twelve. You see, no, Boko waste, is far. Wastages. Boko is far. So go I to think my I think I think clearly for me is again question of leadership. We need the people who understand that the, the, there's a momentum, which, yeah. is, which I agree. Aisha has a point. We, we, the, there's a momentum that we can we need ride to seize, on. Yes. We need to seize it. But I don't think the present crop of, at least in this climate, I'm not hearing, the, I'm not hearing even health. Yeah. Mm. I tweeted something about health, that people, we're, we're addressing COVID simply f from providing, treating COVID. We're not, there's no, I've not heard of any new policy, health policy. How do we build more hospitals? No. How do we, <laughs> so we're just treating, oh, let's, let's do chloroquine, let's do hydroxychloroquine, let's treat it, but that, that's not These are health. the numbers of deaths today. You're These dealing are the numbers with, we still of have, we still have Lassa fever killing thousands of people. We still have malaria killing, killing mothers and still have infant, high infant mortality. Oh, yeah. So that's not the discussion. We're just treating one thing. But there's, there's, there's a, a thousand other things that are ready to you, kill you us. You see, America, you see, um, um, this um, Aisha's advocacy, if I were the president of Nigeria, I will summon an emergency meeting, lead this word for word. I will table it before my team and say, look, this is it. Work on this. We need to use this to drive a new process. Yeah, everything they need is here. All they just need is, okay, how do we make mm -hmm. this possible and work around it? You know, you drive your team with this. We can actually seize the moment. Look at all the areas that she has touched, all the issues that she has raised, and where we are. So we take it from here. But unfortunately, the kind of rulers that we have, the first question will be, what is in it for me? How do I make something from this? And that's why you are not seeing any feasible infrastructure or plans to move us out of the level we are in. And that's why I am a local government of my own. I provide almost everything for myself. And that's why at the end of the day, COVID or no COVID, we'll still wake up tomorrow and be heavily dependent on China. And in fact, as we speak now, government is, the president has sent um, another request to the House of Rep for loan. 
and, and nobody's looking inward. Where can we, you know, tap into to ensure that, you know, we get more money from? Nobody's looking at that. We're talking about agriculture. Go to my 12. Every day we're wasting tomatoes. We're wasting um, mm -hmm. yams. Nobody's, you know, government does not have any concrete plan, apart from individual plans, to ensure that this, there's a process to ensure that these tomatoes are turned to paste so that you don't waste, you know, so much tomatoes like you're wasting them. Nobody's... We had a minister from, of agriculture who's from Benue State and he prided himself as one of the big farmers. And he has a farm he has never really been to. Mm -hmm. And then he does not, he didn't encourage one factory processing um, whatever you call um, uh, juice making factory to his state. So and, Chuka, and, uh, I think you need to come in at this quite point. Quite unfortunate. I think to, yes, I think, to, I think to round up, what it is, I, I, I talked about us having... Um, uh, uh, you know, generally just having honesty, sincerity, and technology. That was the reason why I put technology there, because it would seem like an odd thing to have put when you're talking about honesty and sincerity. But without technology, I mean, we've discussed on this forum before how our rice production is pathetically low per hectare, and yet the president boasts that we are first or second largest rice producer. So it's not about how much you produce, but how well you produce it. And if you can't run your agriculture with technology and therefore properly, which is where America says it's not more people we need, it's actually less, but more food, so that we can go and get into other things, like um, what Aisha has shown us, how the oil industry is just completely underdeveloped and underthought. Um, so basically, we need to become a technologically-based country. And once we adopt that, many things will fall into place. It's like reimagining. We're saying we need to imagine a new Nigeria. So when you say, when, when someone listens to your advocacy, what they see is that the capacity is there in case they forgot. Yeah, that there's absolutely. nothing wrong with us. There's nothing wrong with our country. There's nothing wrong with our people. We can do this. And, you know, I know people yeah. feel that they're frustrated with hearing us talk and complain. But actually, that talking for me continues to build a mindset that yes, we don't have to be in this situation. And eventually, they'll come to a critical point where, I know Emeka is saying he can't see anything. But I, I see some stirrings underneath. Because each time you have this conversation, people keep asking the same question. Why are we not moving why, forward? Why are your glasses? So well, you can maybe see. I need to borrow your glasses to <laughs> see so what you can see. see. <laughs> because I'm, I'm trying to say that there is, because I get stirred up. And eventually, all these things, time and opportunity will come when you will now seize the, you know, who knows? One of us might be in a position to make that difference. So it's good that we keep saying it, we keep having these conversations. So we we'll keep be reminded. Pushing. Yeah, so who knows? Libros or, or I or Emeka may be in a position to, to actually move things to the next stage. So, and who knows who is watching that may be in a position to make that crucial decision and move us out of this uh, state of inertia or even backward motion. So I want to thank you for that. I, you know, I think you've helped continue to create that vision of a phoenix, Africa rising out of the ashes. A fresh voice often makes for a more distinct note. After the break, I'll be taking a fresh look at familiar topic.